Okay, FAQ number 78. The question comes up, are we to be in the world but not of the world? You'll hear that people say, you know, so as Christians, we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. What's the Bible say? 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. We'll read these verses. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, the philosophy here is, you're to be in the world. In other words, you're to have a job, you're to have a car, you're to have a house, you're to have clothing on, you're to eat food and whatever else, but not of the world. And, you know, you got to be careful with some of these little sayings that, that people try to come out with and stuff. Um, you know, what what's going on here in Scripture is, when it talks about loving not the world, it's, it's saying about, you know, the, the course of the world. The, you know, when you can become... Um, just when all you think about is just this world and this life and you're, you know, spending all your time taking care of your house and your, your vehicle and whatever else and, and you just, you don't ever do anything for the Lord. Um, we're here for a purpose. I mean, we are here, we are ministers of the gospel, ministers of, of the ministry of reconciliation has been committed to us. So you have to keep that stuff in mind. But you can't, you get to a point where you say, I'm just going to serve the Lord 100% with my time and I'm never going to take time off or whatever else. I mean, why did God create nature? Do you think he created nature because it's just of the world and you should just not have anything to do with it? And uh, it's just nature is for the lost people out there. Uh, no, God created this world and the magnificence of this world, you know, to, for, for our pleasure basically. And, and also for another reason, let me show you. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The more you study nature, the natural world, the more you will see the hand of God in that creation. You'll look and you'll go, wow, this is amazing stuff. Look at that flower. Look at that bee there. Look at that little bird over there. This is amazing stuff. God created those things as a, um, as a way to show that he is there, that he exists. Let me look up a verse here real quickly. All right, turn back to the book of Psalms. A lot of these verses, I you know, I have words, parts of them, but I can't go right to the references. Some, you know, Pauline epistles, I can go to a lot of that stuff, but Old Testament, I have a hard time sometimes. Psalm 8, uh, verses 3 and 4. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? You know, what David is doing there is he's saying, King David, he's looking and he's going, wow, Lord, when I consider what you've made, the, the heavens and the works of thy fingers, I mean, look at this nature and everything else. What is man that thou art mindful of him? See, he's looking at the natural world. He's looking at what God has created. And you can take that and you can say, God created fruits and vegetables as well. God created animals to be meat for us. So you can take those things and you can say, wow, I really love this type of food or I really this is my favorite meal or whatever else that's not being worldly that's not saying I'm just going to not exist I'll, you know I won't eat or I won't look at anything I'm just going to preach the gospel to everybody that's not what God intended okay God made this world for us to enjoy the the natural world when the Bible talks about you know loving not the world it's not talking about God's creation it's talking about you know movie theaters and shopping malls and the things that man has created, those things that are in the world that pull you away from God, pull you away from the Bible. So, you know, in that sense, as a Christian, being in this world and living in this world, um, you know, you, you are supposed to be here. We have 
things that you have to do. I mean, the meals that you have to make and things. And you can make good meals. Take take time. Make some good meals. I mean, my wife and I, we don't go out to eat ever. We haven't in a long time, years now. And we don't miss it. You know, and you say, what do you do if you have a special time, an anniversary or birthday? We'll buy some special food from the grocery store and make that. You know, spend a couple hours just talking and having a good time and laughing and make a special meal. You know, she'll make a meal for me. I'll make a meal for her, whatever. We have a good time. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, we'll go out. We, we love to take uh, walks in, in the woods and things in nature. Uh, that's just a, a really great time. We love to look at wild flowers and learn about, you know, uh, natural herbs and things like this. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. And uh, I haven't gone fishing in years. I'd like to actually go this year, do some fishing. I used to be really avid in fishing and things. All that stuff is good. And, uh, you know, you're, you're appreciating what God has made. So you can be, you know, and, and having a job and, and taking care of your house and, and changing the oil in your vehicle and stuff like that. Those things are important. But I think a lot of people take it too far then and they're like, well, you know, uh, I have to kind of be, um, you know, a part of the world to win the world or something. No, you're not supposed to be that. And, uh, I mean, you know, I believe that you should be ready to leave this world at any time. And be thankful for the meals that you have. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. And be thankful for a beautiful day where the sun shines through the windows and you can go out and you have a nice walk and sunny day. And, and uh, you know, be thankful for those things. But don't hold on to them so tight that you don't want to leave this world. So... That'll be it for this FAQ. We'll go on to the next one.